Hello everyone and welcome to the Shadowrel. Today we're going to showcase my Leaderless Tri-Brigade deck profile. In my opinion this is the best deck of the format and it can create some of the most unfair boards in the game. Friendly reminder before we start to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now let's dive right into the deck profile. We're playing triple copies of Leaderless Quarbler. If you control no monsters you can special summon this card from your hand and also when this card is special summon you can special summon another Leaderless from your hand out of the graveyard. That's why this card is the best starter of the deck. Moving on we're also playing triple copies of Leaderless Cobalt Sparrow. When this card is special summon you can add a level 1 winged mist monster from your deck meaning that it can search any Leaderless monster monster and also can search the driver gate nerval. Also any excess Lyrilask monster that used it as material has the effect that cannot be targeted by card effects. Now the newest addition in the deck is triple copies of Burn Canary. You can special summon this card from your hand and revive a Lyrilask monster from your graveyard, but for the rest of your turn you're locked into excess summoning. Also if a Lyrilask monster is special summoned using this as material, it cannot change control. You want to keep Burn Canary for the end of your combo because you want to link summon first using the effect of driver gate monsters and then follow up with excess. Now the other new card for the archetype is two copies of Celestine Wagtail. Now when this card is special summoned, you can search for any little desk spell or trap, meaning that you can search for a bird call that you will see later. Also this card has a second effect, while it's in the graveyard you can attach it as material to any little desk exist monster. And the last little desk main deck monster that we're playing is one copy of Suffer Swallow. If you control another wing beast monster, you can special summon this card alongside the level 1 wing beast monster from your hand. Since you only use one copy of this card for your combos, you don't want to play more than one copy. Now moving on to the tri Brigade package, we're playing triple copies of tri Brigade Fractal. If you have Warbler in our hand, this is one of the best cards that we can see in our opening hand, since we can fool this for Cobalt Sparrow and then go full combo after that. Now moving on, we're also playing triple copies of tri Brigade Nerval. Nerval is such an important card in the combo because we want to search him with the effect of Cobalt Sparrow and then special summon him with the effect of Suffer Swallow from our hand. We also want to detach him as a material to activate the effect of our Lyrilask monsters so we can search for another Tri Brigade after that. That's why we're also playing one copy of Tri Brigade Kit and one copy of Tri Brigade Keras. Kit is really important because it can send Oath to the graveyard and Keras acts as an extender later in the combo. Now for the one offs in the deck we're playing one copy of Mist Valley Epic Savian and one copy of Diddy Crow. Mist Valley Epic Savian provides this deck with the only negate that the deck needs while Diddy Crow is searchable with the effect of Cobalt Sparrow or the Exist monster that we're going to see later and it acts as an interruption during our opponent's turn. It's especially useful against Drytron or Phantom Knights or any DPE variant since it can get rid of the recurring threat. Now moving on to the spell lineup, we're playing triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. I know that this card is still expensive for most people, but if you have already access to this card, I highly suggest you running it. It allows you to break boards going second, and when you're going first, you can set it and it acts as interruption during your opponent's turn, while also sending resources to the graveyard like Tri Brigade monsters. We're also playing double copies of Triple Tactics Talent. This card is really great, either going first or second, since when you're going first and get interrupted, it allows you to look at your opponent's hand and get rid of their start or any blowout cards that they have, and if you're going second, you can bait an interruption and go into Zeus plays. Now I'm also managing two copies of Forbidden Chalice. This card is really great one for one trade, especially if you have already monsters on the field, because you can't activate cards like Infinite Impermanence. Keep in mind that you can also chain this card if your opponent activates Scythe during your turn. Now moving on to the power one-offs, we're playing one copy of one for one, one copy of Cold by the Grave, and one copy of Foolish Burial. One for one gonna be one card starter if you send a Little Lusk or Tri Brigade card to the graveyard, while Cold by the Grave deal with the Phoenix Enforcer and your opponent Dorlan Lockbird. For consistency cards, we're playing one copy of Tanky, since it acts as an extra copy of Fractal. And of course, we're playing triple copies of Little Lusk Bird Call. This card can search or fool this any Little Lusk monster, while at the same time, it can special summon a Little Lusk monster with a different name from our hand. If you already have Warbler in your hand, you can play around the role by foolishing the target that you want to the graveyard and then special summon it with the effect of Warbler. Moving on to the trap lineup, we're playing one copy of Tri Brigade Oath, since we can send it to the graveyard with the effect of Tri Brigade Kit. And it acts as an interruption while in the graveyard. And the last card in the main deck is triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. As you can see, we play cards that are flexible, either going first or second, and Infinite Impermanence is one great example. We can use it to either break our opponent's port or use it during the turn to stop their combos. Now moving on to the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of Salaman Great Almiras. This card is really essential in many instances to link off the Dry Brigade or Lyrilask monsters. Now moving on to the rest of the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of Ferdinand and one copy of Double Dragon Lords. Ferdinand allows you to special summon key cards from your hand, while Double Dragon Lords allows you to have an interruption during your opponent's turn. Now another very important card is one copy of Simorg. Simorg allows you to special summon Apex Avian during your end phase, while it also protects 
Apex any wing based monster that it points to. This card is a powerhouse, especially in the grind game. And of course, this wouldn't be a Tri Brigade deck if we didn't play double copies of Shurek the Ominous Omen. As you will see later, one of the copies is used every time in the first turn combo, since it allows us to search for an additional Tri Brigade monster, and the second copy is really great since it can banish non target the card on the field. The last link monster that we're playing is one copy of Apollosa, both the goddess. If we can't go full combo, this is usually a card that we can special summon with this. Now moving on to the Exit lineup of the extra deck, we're playing double copies of Rectal Starling. This card is amazing because it buffs our monsters, it allows us to search for any small wing miss monster that we need, and also we can crash it against our opponent's monster and we take both the same battle of damage. And they're both essential for Utopic Future Draco. We're also playing one copy of Assembled Nightingale because it allows us to attack directly, it protects our monsters from getting destroyed from battle, and also it allows us to go into Zeus and wipe our opponent's board with this. Now the newest addition in the extra deck is one copy of Assembled Robin. If your opponent special summons a monster while this card is on the field, you can detach the material and bounce that monster back to the hand. And the great thing about that is that the effect is not once per turn. Also if this card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card, you can get one of your realist monsters. We're also playing the Utopic Future package since we can make it with these going first and allow us to play around the Nibiru. It also applies a lot of pressure while it's on the field because it can negate your opponent's monster and steal them while their effect is activated on the field. And on top of that, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And the last two cards in the extra deck is one copy of Downward Magician and one copy of Divine Arslan AA Zeus. As I mentioned earlier, you can easily go into Assembly Nightingale, attack directly twice and go into Downward and then into Zeus. Also a cool trick if you have triple tactics talent and you're playing the mirror match, you can steal your opponent's utopic future Draco and overlay into Downward because it is treated as a rank 1. Now moving into the side deck, we're playing one copy of Dark Morgue, especially useful when we're going against back row matchups. While this card is on the field, your opponent cannot set cards, which is an extremely powerful floodgate effect. Now moving on, we're also playing double copies of Traptrix, because this card acts as two additional copies of the card you're going to see next. The card that I was talking about is of course triple copies of Harpy's Featherstorm. If you control a Winged Mist monster and you activate this card, your opponent's activated monster effects are negated for the rest of the turn. This is a really powerful floodgate effect that essentially allows you to go uninterrupted turn 3 and notificate your opponent with this. Also, if you choose to play Harvest Feather Duster and this card gets destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can search Harvest Feather Duster to your hand. Also, including two power one offs, one copy of Imperial Order and one copy of Red Reboot. Imperial Order needs no introduction, but Red Reboot is a really powerful card, especially in the mirror match because it can turn down your opponent's Harvest Feather Storm. I'm also signing two copies of Lightning Storm because it's an amazing blowout card, especially against the back row decks and also against the PK and Tri Brigade matchups. Moving on, I'll also play triple copies of Twin Twisters. This is an amazing back row removal card that can deal with multiple threats your opponent may have. And since we're playing a small Tri Brigade package, sending Nerval or Kid to the graveyard means that we're going to get searches after that. Also, you can consider playing Cosmic Cyclone instead. And the last two cards in the side deck is double copies of Tron and Lockbird. In my opinion, this is the most generic and powerful hand trap in this metagame, especially in the mirror match because it can stop your opponent from going full board. I highly recommend you running it. And now let's move on to the combo portion of the video. All we're going to need for this combo is World Bird and access to Cobalt Sparrow. And if we have another monster discard, this is going to be an even greater combo. We're gonna start things off by activating the effect of Fractal, sending it to the graveyard in order to send to the graveyard a copy of Cobalt Sparrow. Since we can draw no monsters on our side of the field, we can special summon the Warbler and activate its effect to special summon Cobalt Sparrow from the graveyard. When Cobalt Sparrow is special summoned to our side of the field, it's going to trigger her effect in order to search for a winged beast. In this instance, we're going to search for a Trap Brigade Interval. In this instance, even if we get it rolled, we can continue our combos fine. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that our opponent has no draw. Next, we're going to overlay the two birds in order to special summon a Restal Starling from our extra deck and then activate her effect, detaching the material in order to search for another wing beast monster. In this instance, we're going to search for Sapphire Swallow. Then we can proceed to activate the effect of Sapphire Swallow, special summon it alongside Tribal Gate Nerval. And then we can proceed to overlay those two for another copy of Restal Starling. Then we can proceed to activate her effect once again and uh, send Nerval to the graveyard in order to search for a copy of Celestine Wagtail. And on a separate chain, we're going to activate the effect of Nerval to get us a copy of Kit. Keep in mind that until now we haven't normal summoned yet. Now we're going to special summon our Nibiru Bait. We're going to use the two Restar Starlings and we're going to overlay for a copy of Utopic Future. Even if our opponent decides to Nibiru us at this point, we have all the resources that we need to the graveyard. We're then of course going to overlay the Utopic Future for Utopic Future Draco. Now we can continue our combo uninterrupted. We can normal summon Kit and activate her effect in order to banish four monsters from the graveyard. It is important to keep Sapphire Swallow in the graveyard because we're going to need it later in the combo. Since we banish four monsters, we can 
and special salmon and copy of Sureg the ominous salmon and then we can proceed to link salmon using git and Sureg the ominous salmon for a copy of Reddit the Baron Blossom. That's going to trigger the effects of Sureg and git. Chain link 1 Sureg, chain link 2 git. Git is going to send to the graveyard a copy of Oath and Sureg is going to search us for a copy of Keras. Sending Oath to the graveyard is really important since in the end board we're going to have one of each type of monsters that we're going to need. Then we can proceed to activate the effect of Regid the Baron Blossom and special summon Celestine Wagtail from our hand. This is going to trigger her effect in order to search us for a copy of Bird Call. Then we can proceed to link summon using Celestine Wagtail and Regid the Baron Blossom for a copy of Simorg. That's going to trigger the effect of Regid to draw a card and put one card back to our deck. Let's assume that we drew a random wing paste. Then we're going to activate Bird Call and search for a copy of Berlin Canary. Then we can activate the effect of Keras to special summon itself of the field by sending one BBW to the graveyard. We can then proceed to activate Keras effect by sending two monsters from our graveyard in order to special summon a link to monster. In this instance we're going to special summon a copy of Double Dragon Lords. Since we have Berlin Canary to our hand we're going to activate her effect to special summon to the field and then revive back the Sapphire Swallow. Keep in mind that when we special summon an Exist monster using Sapphire Swallow as material it gives the special summon monster the effect to attach a Lyrilask monster as material from the graveyard. In this instance we're going to attach a Berlin Canary that we have in the graveyard. Also Celestine Wagtail has the effect to attach itself as material to an exit summon monster that we have. So the assembled Robin is going to have 4 materials and it's also going to have the effect of Berlin Canary that it cannot change control, plus an additional 200 attack. Then we can proceed to the end phase, we're going to activate the effect of Simurg and special summon Epic Savion from our deck. That's going to be our end board, meaning that we have a monster negate, two omni negates in the form of Oath and Apex Avian, four bounces with the effect of Ensembled Robin, and one bounce with the effect of Double Dragon Lords. We could also have another two interruptions in our hand. That basically wraps up today's deck profile and combo video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions about the deck or any previous decks that you've seen in the channel, make sure to join my Discord server, the link is in the description down below as well. Until next time, make sure to stay safe and I will see you all in the sad realm.